Hey guys, what's up? Um, I know it's about time I did a video. How hard is it to talk into a screen, right? Um, but uh, I've been out of uh, making videos and uh, once my channel got shut down, I was just kinda, you know, um, I have my own issues with this issue. I have my own anger issues and um, I've had them all my life. All I can say is this is 100% the reason so uh, the thing I fight against is the thing that makes me angry and hard to fight against it, which whatever, it is what it is. Anyways, um, so I'm going gonna, gonna to do some more videos. They're coming out real soon. Um, I'm going to do some things with Cockfight with Brett Johnson. Hopefully um, we can get some organization going because activism needs some organization and it needs some things to be said. I'm going to be saying some, a few things uh, with some videos, I think, coming out that need to be said, that need to um, be approached in this movement because it is a disjointed, um, unorganized um, movement. Um, I've, you know, as far as the movement itself, we have more, we hold all the cards. We have every, if this was in Vegas, we would win every hand. <laughs> that we would wipe the house clean. They would uh, never invite us back to the casino again. Um, so we have every card there is. We have the, the science. We have the medical facts. We have the historical evidence. We have the uh, logical reasoning. We have the um, ethical reasoning. Um, we have every... <laughs> Everything is on every every card we have and that's why these these cowards that are child abusing cowards psychos That's what these people are They they know how weak their hand is. I mean, we're, we're arguing against raping a child with a knife I mean, it doesn't take many brain cells if you're a human being To come to the right conclusion on this. It just doesn't and um, There's a lot of weak-minded people who just follow the herd in our society and that's a sad thing that that uh, we are so as a society misled, um, miseducated um, on this issue. But anyways, um, so we're gonna, I, I'm just gonna say, look for some good things in the future. Um, come back, watch some other videos. The reason why I wanted to do this video tonight, and uh, you know, I maybe started with the wrong kind of impression of what this type of video is gonna be, but um, what this video is gonna be about, but um, I'm actually on cloud fucking nine right now. I may not look like it. I'm a little tired, um, but I'm on, uh, wow, I feel great. Uh, a friend of mine called me today and said that um, he needs some information, that he's with a friend in a hospital right now with a son. And, um, you know, I, I get a little anxiety. I get uh, very nervous. Am I gonna say the right thing? You know, there's so many um, things I could say or do wrong, and, and that's some of the issues we'll be talking about later on is what are the right things to say to the right person and, and you know, um, is being angry an acceptable um, uh, approach to changing people's behavior and changing the psychology of other people or alerting other people to the, uh, the facts. So anyways, um, I think there's some misunderstandings of how human psychology actually works and we'll be talking about that type of stuff uh, in future videos. Anyways, let me get to the goddamn point. I'm on cloud nine because I saved a baby today. <laughs> um, I just had, I had a conversation. You can, uh, okay, for us intactivists, we got to know our shit. I can answer every question this guy had. He knew I was passionate about it. He could tell. Um, it really helped that a friend of mine that was with him is from Europe and is an intact man. And um, he was the one that called. So I had a very strong, strong in because we have an example of someone you know, who is intact and you can't look at him and be like, oh, you're, oh, that's so disgusting. You have that normal part of your body, right? Like Americans would, might say. But anyways, um, so there's that. So I had that and then, you know, I answered, I just went off and, uh, you know, I tend to do that. And I said, you know, are, are you the logical type? Do you want to hear this stuff? He's like, man, I, I you know, I, I, I'm listening to everything you're saying. He's like, the, you know, one, one of the things that he said that, you know, I think one of the things I think that we have to understand is that everybody's going to be different. Everybody's going to have a, a point, right, that gets them, right? So I said to him, what he said got him. I was talking about the medical reasons, excuses, and I said, you know, there was, 
you know, when you have a, a stint being put in somebody's heart, right, there, there's, a, there's a diagnosis, there's a heart disease, and doctors say, hey, if we do this, we can drop the incidence of, of death from heart disease by putting these stints in there to, you know, make sure that these, the arteries are flowing and everything like that. So, you know, let's do this surgery. Well, there was no medical um, reason that this was started. There was no epidemic of dick diseases. There are people's, you know, dicks weren't falling off or, or rotting off or, you know, smelling up the house or any of this ridiculous stuff that we hear. Um, you know, they didn't have any, any, any dick diseases. There was no start of, of this that was, had a medical excuse. This was actually, well, I mean, it was started by quack medicine when they believed that um, masturbation caused disease. Okay, so they thought that sin caused diseases, was a cause of diseases. If you got sick, it was because you sinned, right? Um, this was before germ theory, so they, um, you know, they thought that uh, when they caught boys masturbating, and this was used as a punishment, so it was used to punish baby boys, uh, or I'm sorry, boys for masturbating. So um, this was before it was, you know, widespread. The same people that believed that this should be done to um, punish boys for masturbation also believed in um, using carbonic acid to... Um, you know, burn off little girls' clitorises if they were caught masturbating. So, you know, um, they weren't as sexist as we are today. You know, it was a little bit more equal back in those days. Anyways, um, so I said that to him, and he said, wow, there's no, there's nothing medical that started this. He was like, there's the history. He was like, that, that was the point that clicked with him. You know, for me, it was the 75% one half the surface area. That's all I had to hear. You know, when I'm, I know that I'm missing a lot of my nerves, and I know that, um, you know, like uh, my experience has never been that um, sensational, I guess you could say. Uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've uh, you know, through our minds, we have a potential a tr tremendous power to um, influence our orgasm, of course. And, you know, the person you're with makes a huge difference with that, obviously, if you're in love and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, when you're in love with somebody that you're going to have an amazing feeling with them, whether you're circumcised or not. But is it to the quality or extent? Absolutely not. You know, it's not the same. It's not the same as it would be for an intact man. So that was enough for me, you know, to know that, hey, you know what, I'm actually experiencing these, these quality, the loss of quality of sensation um, as I've aged. You know, the exposure has dramatically lowered the sensation. You know, I feel like I've got basically numb. But, it, uh, you know, I'm, uh, it's, it's a little bit above numb, but I, I feel it and I enjoy the act and, and I'm turned on by... Um, my partner being turned on. So that in itself is what, what uh, you know, allows me to enjoy it. And I guess the rest of us who are cut enjoy it as well. But anyways, that was it for me. So there's other reasons, you know, the medical, you know, the uh, psychology. I know a lot of people are very interested in how it, the, the psychology that damages the, the psychology of the child. Look at adverse childhood experiences on, on Harvard. You'll see that it affects the actual um, epigenetics of the child. It, it affects the, the actual structures in the brain called the amygdala and the, um, the limbic system and how the limbic system functions. It, it changes how our body activates our fight or flight, rest and digest nervous system. So the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic, sympathetic fight or flight, parasympathetic is, is rest and digest. So men that have you know had trauma or people that have had trauma as infants are more likely to um, react and to react more strongly to stimulus. It's just uh, infused trauma. That's what it is. So anyways, all those three different reasons are very powerful. But, um, wow, um, no matter what, no matter what, always try, always try. You know, um, if you're worried about offending a friend or something like that, think about, okay, well, maybe you offend a friend, but what's the worst things that can happen? You offend a friend or you prevent a, a knife rape of a child. You know, which is worse? Um, you know, one... Is, is, you know, sad and you're, you're going to have to deal with the repercussions of it. But the other is a child has to deal with the repercussions of it. So don't ever hold back your word. Don't ever be quiet. Don't ever not say something. Just do it. And this guy listened. I have much respect for you. Much respect for you, sir. If you hear this message, thank you for listening. Uh, it takes a special kind of man to be able to accept um, that this was damaging and to be able to, uh, to stop the cycle. To stop the cycle is, it takes a very strong person. It takes a real man. It takes a real man to stop the cycle, to be honest with himself, because it, stopping the cycle is at least some way admitting that I've had some sort of reduction, that this wasn't necessarily a good thing for me, which of course it never was or is or couldn't possibly be. 
So anyways, um, I saved a baby tonight. It's a feeling that, uh, fuck, it's great. I mean, it's great. I love it. I can't, um, there's um, just a feeling, <laughs> wow. I hope you guys get to feel this feeling, but I saved a baby tonight. I love all you guys. Um, fight the good fight. Be real, be honest. We hold all the cards. You know, we don't have to be meek we don't have to be quiet. We don't have to, um, we don't have to tread softly. We need to be uh, loud. We need to treat this as it is what it is. When people start seeing us treat it how it is what it is, then they will respond. I'm telling people this whole kumbaya bullshit, this whole we got to be quiet, we got to like, you know, hold hands through this and, and, and try to like, you know, use logic and reasoning for these parents. It's just, it just doesn't work it doesn't work until you're screaming your fucking head off saying what the fuck are you doing to that child outside of these doctor's clinics this is going to continue we really need to be vocal we we really need pissed off mad motherfuckers showing up to protest and fucking being mad not being violent i do not support any form of violence um do i think it's going to happen absolutely it may be a necessary part of, of, of society healing from this where somebody um, sadly um, hurt, hurts their future because they want to get back at, at somebody that did this to them. And that is expected. Um, I don't support it. I don't want anybody other than tactivists to, to damage your life any more than it has been done by these cocksucking bastards. And they do, they do literally do that to kids. Anyways, um, so um, <laughs> it's bittersweet, right? Talking about one of the worst things in the world, but I just saved a baby from it today. I saved a man um, with the help of a real man, a father. Oh, much respect to you, man. Much respect. With one conversation, one conversation, this man got it. He was... He didn't flop over. He asked questions. You know, he still needs to verify, verify everything. He needs to do his research, but he will. And I, I've got the resources for him, and I'm going to make sure he has access to those. So he's going to get it. He's going to know. Um, he's going to know what he's missing. But he stopped the cycle with one fucking phone conversation. One phone conversation. Don't ever doubt it. Don't ever sit back and question whether or not you need to let your voice be said. And I don't care if you say it the wrong way. I've said it the wrong way a million times. Um, one last thing. Um, for people to say that um, this has happened recently, um, and, I, and, and I hope that uh, the intactivist that, uh, that I'm talking with this, um, I, I really uh, I have a lot of respect for you, and this is a different agreement with words. I just would hope you would uh, use these words just a little bit differently. And you said the same thing to me, and I'm going to listen to that. Um, I, when I used the, my words, I was really upset about what you said because you said that um, if I am a, voice, a boisterous or I attack mothers and go after them and call them names, that they're going to revenge cut. And, um, you know, uh, I'm not saying that I am the perfect person, that, the perfect person to, just, to give this message. I'm not saying that whatsoever. Um, but I don't just jump on people's throats. I don't just like start off with you fucking cunt. Da, 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 da. Now, if they're on the, if there's um, other intactivists that have already shared information, you know, calmly and collectively and, and politely, and they're you know bucking the information or they're saying horrific things about their child's genitals, about how disgusting they are, or just the sickest shame is you know child shaming slash you know pedophilic type of sick ass disgusting behavior um you know adamantly uh, being adamant about cutting your child's genitals you know uh, um, avoiding listening to information that would stop you from harming your own child is one of the most um base disgusting cowardly um sickest things a person could do so um to blame me if that person then goes and cuts their child is because i'm mad at them and i respond to them in a negative in a, in a way that um I think is necessary, okay? I think is necessary, psychologically necessary. 
for these people to wake the fuck up. Okay, I think it's a smack in the face. Some of them need it. I'm the one that'll give them that. So if you know anybody that needs a fucking smack, um, physically or logically or ethically, I'll be that person. Please believe that. Um, anyways, um, keep your voice. Don't be quiet. Um, stop telling men to not be angry. Okay, let us be angry when we're on a, um, you know, when we're talking to somebody that's, you know, um, just has these sick beliefs, that has this sick position, this sick, this sick um, way of thinking that is, um, it should be viewed with abhorrence and disgust. And when you view it that way and other people see that, then they're going to start paying attention. Okay? If there's a fire over there and I see a bunch of people running, I see people running, oh shit, there's something over there. Okay? If I see a bunch of people standing around a building, I'm not going to run, you know, I might be caught in a fire, right? But if I see people running, I might run out of the building, you know, kind of the same thing. So people pay attention to other people. It's not just the person you're talking to, it's the other people that are reading, it's the family and the friends. Okay? It's the other, it's the men. Oh, there's another men that's this mad about it? Why have I not looked into this? How could he be so pissed off? Wow, I've never heard a man be this mad. Well, let him hear it. They need to hear it. They need to know how fucking mad we're about it. This is disgusting. It's sick. In 2020, we're cutting parts off little children for the profits of medical institutions. These people are... Coward, disgusting, psychotic, and they need to be called out for who the fuck they are. Okay, I went off on this video, but um, I had a lot to say. So I don't even know what to name this. Rantings and ravings and save baby. Love you guys. Save more babies. It's the best feeling in the world. There's uh, no, no better feeling, I think, besides um, loving somebody deeply. Yeah. You know, being able to protect a child. I don't know that child. I hopefully someday I'll meet him, but I don't know him. But I'll tell you what, I feel love in my heart for that child. I would do anything to protect that child, even though I don't know him. And that's what I did. So don't be quiet. Do the right fucking thing. This is real.